circular saw. Bearings or something are broken in that one. And here's the back where it plugs in. This is a normal battery. Not incredibly light, nor incredibly long lasting. Um, I've got about three, three sets of these, so like six of these now. This is what it looks like dismantled. There's individual NIM cells in there. Nickel metal hydride is the technology in this. They're not incredibly expensive, but they're not cheap, and they don't last that long, most importantly. So I don't want to carry around this weight or have to keep recharging them from using something that eats a battery like this. So Ryobi actually makes this adapter, which plugs into here. See, it's got the same, the start of the same shape as the battery. So it plugs into here for carrying the smaller tools, like on your belt. So what I've done is I want to run via an extension cord DC current to this from the charger to eliminate having to change batteries all the time. So the first thing I've done for this project is drilled a hole in here from there to there. Second thing I've done is taken an old extension cord I had. I used a wire stripper, which is, you know, you can just do it however, but stripped out both ends of this. Next step, made my hole in here a little bit bigger than the wires I want to put through. I'm going to feed these through like this. Got it. Woohoo! Now, original attempts at this failed because I was just kind of sticking these wires up in the adapter, uh, up in the tool. And you'll notice the difference between these. This doesn't come up as far. It locks in. I'll show you with the easy battery. So the difference between these, this doesn't, this little plastic piece here doesn't come up as far as this one. So what I want to do is improvise something to bring this up that far because what I need is to put these metal leads up here. My wires are going to run to metal leads up here. And I want them roughly the same thickness so that they'll actually touch the leads on the tool that they need to bring power to it. So this is the ultra high tech part of the project. What I've done is this is a little chunk of great stuff foam. Held a piece of great stuff up to here next to my battery and carved it to be about the same size using my high-tech Leatherman saw. So now I want to mount this on here, have my wire come up each side and put it in about the same place where these leads are. I decided that I'm going to try using that most high tech of high tech fasteners that we all know and love duct tape. You see these nice fancy conductive leads? What I'm going to use is another ultra high tech thing aluminum foil. So, we've got our improvised foam thing. Set that on top of there. Actually, let's double check our height. I think I made this. Yeah, check it out. Okay, so I made this close to the same height as my original. I'm going to trim it down. Let's see. Got a real high tech here. And totally eyeball it. Okay, so now I'm going to set my, basically just a cube now, <laughs> on here. So check it out, just around both of these wires. Pretty close to here, because I didn't need much slack, I'm kind of just eyeballing it. I'm going to wrap around, not a whole thickness, a, not a whole strand wide, it's like a sub amount. Of course, there's about a thousand better ways to do this, but I don't want this to slide in either, so I'm going to actually do duct tape on the other side too. Okay, this thing's just annoying, so I'm going to cut it off. So now we've got duct tape above, duct tape below. 
channel for this whole shebang and see if that works. Sweet. Looking pretty fancy, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> Check our height out. High tech comparison. Looks within. Yeah, looks like we're getting. I oh, know. Okay, we'll try high tech fancy. Likewise on the other side. Okay, this is going to secure our foam to the bottom. Fancy. Now, supposedly duct tape is conductive. I'm going to be so bold as to say I don't think it's going to give me a problem for this, but we'll find out shortly. So, I guess one side of the equation, maybe. Let's see how it fits. Hmm. Doesn't seem to at first. It's okay. I cut some more duct tape off. I added one layer to the bottom to hold it on. And with a little more force than we should need. Looks like we've got something that snaps in our charger. Which we have here that let us pull power out of it. Wow. See, it detects the battery state. It stops charging it when it goes on, blah, blah, blah. So, what I'm going to do is, you can see these contacts in here matching up to these. I'm sure this is extremely unsafe for numerous, numerous reasons. But, I'm going to open this up. Connected one end of our chunk of extension cord wire to each of these. If you push on this from the other side, this just pops out. Shut my case back up, and in typical fancy style, I've got duct tape there. So now we have our leads. Let's check if that actually carries the current. In 10 amps. Yeah, it does. So I was getting like 10 amps. 10 plus amps and 30 volts DC off of this. Let's see what happens when we put a battery in. There we go. Okay, with the battery in it goes to 3.5 amps. And twenty volt. I'm gonna take the ends of this wire and just splice on a normal outlet, running one wire at each side. I've got my outlet spliced on to my groovy charger. I'll plug this in. My charge light goes on, which means I should be getting close to the right voltage. I haven't plugged in yet, so I should probably not be nervous. That's locked on. Surprisingly light compared to with the battery. And plug our extension cord into our improvised outlet. Make that set up. Our plug. Now let's plug it in. Okay, we're plugged in. Let's rev it up. Hmm. That's kind of anticlimactic. Okay. Let's troubleshoot. Hmm. That doesn't look great. Let's test the leads and see what happened. Hmm. Doesn't look like I'm really getting voltage on there. Let's make sure we're pulling up through our extension cord.
Yeah, I'm getting 21 volts there. There we go, so when I stick this way in, <laughs> it's working. Okay, I think we may just need a little more foil on here. Let's give that a try. Check it. Much lighter, and... You're actually overclocked a little bit, not to mention endless power. The way I finally got this to work is like this, believe it or not. So, to finish this up, I'm going to add some adhesive to the bottom here so that we're not quite as jerry-rigged and <laughs> non sturdy of a setup, and then we should be in pretty good shape. So, thanks for watching. Tune in next time.